Ambassador Werfer graduated in law uh, in Vienna and then right after joined the uh, foreign ministry and uh, uh, served in this, uh, different positions, also related to culture as uh, the head of the Austrian Culture Institute uh, in Rome. But uh, after uh, returning there, he was also uh, serving uh, uh, as a main diplomat, in, uh, as a main uh, uh, responsible at the Prime Minister's office uh, for funding art and uh, organizing a, a giant concert, a conference in, the, in, in Salzburg, the Sand of Europe. Uh, art participants uh, already know that he uh, also served outside Europe because he had positions in Belgrade and Zagreb, but also in Indonesia and also in Turkey. So I hope that you bring some examples from your different uh, experiences. Thank you. Great, we have some slides. Great. Um, hello, welcome back. Um, many interesting things have been said about the various streams of cultural policy, or cultural uh, diplomacy. There is the mainstream, and I think uh, Daniel has referred to state action to do that. What I will do, I work with state, in the, with the state, for the Austrian state, but I will concentrate on the non-state um, things because uh, I believe that in their effect they are equally very important and maybe even stronger than many of the things that we do. There is another thing about Europe. Um, it is true what Jean-Luc Soule just said, that there are programs of, for, for fostering cultural heritage to bring it to the, uh, bring people together and to, to dig into cultural heritage. We have the cultural um, uh, capital of Europe program, in Vesprem and things like that. But, in my humble opinion, these are very um, limited, uh, I'm not saying superficial, but very small uh, things, and the European Union has always shied away by principle of really doing um, a cultural policy or cultural diplomacy, uh, saying that uh, culture is so uh, such uh, uh, is in the domain of the states of the member states, and only them should do it. It's a national thing, and the EU cannot interfere, which is not quite right because um, not quite true because uh, there are now um, these so-called European values, which are being quoted uh, right, left, and center, which are not <laughs> very clear, which are different to a citizen of uh, Romania and uh, to a citizen of uh, Norway, or no, it's not Norway, <laughs> Netherlands or, or Sweden, <laughs> and which bring out uh, quite, a, quite a few friction lines. Um, this is the... Introduction. So the EU has no real powerful uh, cultural diplomacy. Uh, the United States, which I will uh, like to um, examine a little bit, also does not. But uh, there is another thing. Uh, when I was um, head of the Austrian Cultural Center in Rome, Italy, there was a meeting of the cultural experts of, the, of several countries, including the United States. And we, the Europeans, we all said we are doing this and that and promoting that movie and this festival. Huh? And the United States uh, Public Affairs Office of the U.S. Embassy, uh, he said, well, there's no point in that. We don't have public uh, diplomacy. We don't have public diplomacy. We don't have uh, cultural uh, diplomacy. There is no point. There is no need. Now, he was half joking and uh, he didn't want to um, berate us or, or be uh, haughty. No, he, he expressed the obvious that with Hollywood dominating the movie market, the cinemas, the TV channels, and now the um, Netflix and the Apple TV and uh, all these things, this is cultural diplomacy of the most powerful manner. And maybe we can have a few uh, of the slides. Is there a way? Ah, yeah. This is for me to move forward. Ah, yeah. And that brings me to the way that uh, countries like the United States uh, move about and start to move about. And I think it should be um, kind of a guiding light. Who recognizes this, um, this city? No, it's uh, this in the center of Jakarta, Indonesia. 
and in the, the down in the, the this little square in the in the in the, in the in here, uh, this is um, a Pacific Place. It's a shopping mall, a major shopping mall, and in the Pacific Place on the fifth floor, you have the f half of the floor reserved to a thing which is called At America. And it is uh, what I call a cultural center of the 21st century. It is just tablets, uh, computers, uh, big screens, and an amphitheater where they do um, meeting shows, uh, uh, conferences. It's all funded by the companies, by, I don't know, Microsoft, Google, and Apple, and whoever. The US Embassy organized the, the, the thing to happen. And, and it is working, and people flock there, and uh, they go there when they go shopping. And they, in Indonesia, everybody goes shopping all the time in these uh, super in these uh, shopping malls because they're nicely uh, air conditioned. And, and uh, this is the thing. Now, uh, another example of powerful um, state, not state, non-state public diplomacy, is the Turkish um, TV. Uh, series, so, soap operas if you want, um, centered around the 16th century when the uh, Sultan uh, Suleiman the Great uh, um, lived and, and conquered half of the world and uh, was very, 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 very strong. So they did a series of well, well done um, uh, movies uh, which were a tremendous success, uh, not only in Turkey, but in the Middle East, in uh, South Europe, in, uh, here in Slovakia, in many places that you wouldn't expect uh, that this is, uh, that it became extremely uh, important. It was part of a cultural presence and cultural manifestation. Or it was uh, part of a political strategy to highlight the Ottoman past. It was great entertainment. It was tourism promotion, uh, and it was uh, projecting a an, 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 uh, picture of Turkey, which was quite uh, sometimes quite uh, frivolous. Um, this gives you an idea. Uh, uh, to the point that the then Prime Minister Erdogan, I was uh, living in Turkey at that time, he said, well, uh, he kind of, he, he objected, he groaned and moaned, he said, ah, well, is this really necessary to have this type of scenes in the movie? Maybe they adapted, maybe they, they didn't, I, I'm not sure, I don't know. But it, it shows the immense popularity. And you see the, uh, the beautiful um, faces uh, of the actresses, which in turn gave rise to a huge um, beauty uh, cosmetic industry in, uh, in, in Istanbul, <laughs> where the, the ladies of, of, of a wider region would go and... Um, make sure they have the same, exactly the same nose as the princess or the uh, sultana in the movie. Now, and, and, very good, but also the men, you know, they had their, uh, <laughs> their hair implanted <laughs> to resemble Mehmet the Great. Uh, the origin of the imported content, there you see, Turkey is, uh, that is, I think, a 2016 uh, thing, in the world, is, uh, is number one in the world. That was in the year 2016. Okay, in Latin America, it's mostly U.S. and, and their, own, um, uh, their own productions, but it shows how a country, a mid-sized country, can uh, acquire, uh, can become a cultural diplomacy, a cultural uh, superpower in, in a way. Uh, this shows also the countries uh, where Turkish, Turkish movies are watched, uh, practically uh, most of the world. Okay, uh, now uh, let me look, uh, a shed a glance on the more classical European uh, way of doing cultural diplomacy. Here you see the Hungarian Cultural Center in Berlin. It's, it's very nice and also quite uh, using modern, uh, very uh, up-to-date techniques with the projection on the outer wall. Or uh, you have the, on the other side the oldest Austrian cultural center in the world, it is in Rome. It was built as an Aust like the one in, Hung uh, in Berlin, the Hungarian one. It was built as a, a cultural center. You see, it's all. It looks fa old fashioned. There's lots of books there, but it also conveys a thing. However, the outreach is um, not the same as a Hollywood movie or a Turkish soap opera. That is also true. 
This is uh, another example of, of the of our recent cultural center. It's the French cultural center in Budapest, where Jean-Luc Soulet was uh, the first director of, in that building, I understand. Uh, here you see the Institut Francais in, there's a one in, in, uh, in, in, Hung in Budapest, and on the, on the other side is the one in, in Vienna, also centrally located, the Collegium Hungaricum. These things, they have a, a certain value, but of course, in the times of tablets, in the time of COVID, of course, uh, it becomes uh, secondary. Now, uh, let's have a, a more, um, I, I will just tease you with a few uh, images and ideas. And uh, uh, now the following part of my um, narration to you is uh, trying to provoke uh, thought and also questions that maybe we have the time to discuss a little bit. Reconciliation, you see the, um, Austria and Hungary had a, a mixed relationship, some, there was some, a bit of a rivalry, and uh, uh, the Queen of Hungary and the Empress of Austria, um, Sisi was, uh, <laughs> she brought them together, that was a subject for, for movies, it was a big success story. So you have different elements. It's nation building in Austria, it's bridging, uh, it's a reconciliatory uh, aspect towards Hungary, not really necessary, but still. <laughs> and uh, and it, it's good for tourism. You have a CC museum nowadays in Vienna. I will. Uh, bridging uh, political divides. This was uh, the very first uh, Western film director who was allowed into China, uh, Michelangelo Antonioni in the 1980s. He opened up, you see him here filming on the, on the, in the center of uh, Beijing. Uh, and it was an element of a bridging uh, process of a recon reconciliatory uh, thing, which then was pr uh, prolonged, which was uh, strengthened by uh, Richard Nixon's and uh, Henry Kissinger's ping pong diplomacy. But uh, cultural can play an important uh, role. But it's just stuck now, maybe. Oops. Mm -hmm. uh, so, ah, okay. Uh, Soviet Union, same thing. Uh, you have this film, the, the Sunflowers by Vittorio De Sica with Sofia Loren traveling to. Uh, to the Soviet Union, mostly to uh, Ukraine, frankly. In fact, uh, are searching for her, her husband who was, um, who was lost in thing. Uh, Austria, this is the final uh, image, um, had the big strike of luck to have um, a movie uh, made in the United States, The Sound of Music, which treated the uh, history of the World War II history which is extremely well known in the world, not so much well known in Austria. Uh, yeah, it's not, not as much not by the Austrians. It's known in Austria, of course, we have uh, Sound of Music museums, Sound of Music tours. It's a major uh, tourism uh, promoter and uh, instrument for, for having um, a tourism. But with all these images, the bright images, uh, not, not very um, scientifically put together, I wanted to just to highlight to you the power of images, the power of movies, television, of direct uh, media, which today with everybody watching, uh, their, uh, looking at their uh, tablets or uh, iPhones is, uh, is, is very pertinent. This is the way um, sentiments are shaped and, and, and things are done. Um, there is a few questions that uh, I would like to pose. Of course, the, uh, I mentioned the Euro uh, European uh, cultural diplomacy which de facto is not the, what we've seen here, the little things, uh, but it is the Eiffel Tower, it is the uh, Viennese Waltz, it is Michelangelo, Leonardo, Picasso, uh, Franz Liszt, uh, Ferenc Liszt, Fellini, and this. This is what is still, uh, still um, playing a role, but um, uh, maybe not enough. It's diversity, it's the projection of diversity, which can work, which is an asset, we have a, um, in Asia, Asia we have the example, and uh, um, Ms. Mita, she, yesterday she very convincingly conveyed to us the power of diversity, which is the 
backbone of the Indonesian state where uh, this is lived, this is a reality, uh, and uh, where the minorities, they are not minorities, where the many groups, they have a real weight, and, and the country and everybody is, I think, is proud that they are there. I can say that after, after having lived there um, quite a long time. You have different examples which are very negative, um, like in Myanmar, where you have one um, main um, stream and uh, the minorities, where they are real minorities, are in a difficult situation. There is constant strife, warfare, military dictatorships ensuing. So it's not, it's not uh, irrelevant of how a state manages to organize itself in, in, um, in the quest on the question of identity and cultures. How does the global south perceive Europe's cultural expressions? Uh, books have been written, I recommend uh, Edward Said, uh, but uh, it's a subject matter which is of, um, of the highest relevance. And uh, I shouldn't say it, but I mean, you all know it, uh, what the um, uh, highest representative of, Aust of European uh, foreign policy, uh, uh, Mr. Borrell uh, expressed, and, and Jean-Luc already quoted, quoted him yesterday, he, he compared the world to, or he compared Europe to a garden, and we are the gardener and protect Europe, and outside there's a wall, out there's a wall around it, and outside the wall there's the jungle and the jungle might invade. Now this is, I think, absolutely, it's not, it's not intelligent, it's not nice, it's simply stupid and wrong, frankly speaking, with all due respect to the highest representatives of, of the European Union. But this is not how we, we will um, uh, get along in this, in this world. Um, we need uh, respect, and maybe um, one other um, uh, thing on, on this cultural diplomacy, that's an important uh, fact, in fact. How do we deal with the very with, the, with respect to other uh, cultures and religions? And uh, as an ambassador to Singapore, I, I once um, witnessed um, a scene. There was a European National Day, the Euro uh, National European Day celebration in Singapore, and one of the leading um, figures of Singapore, Tommy Ko, he gave a speech and. Uh, of praising Europe, how much he loved it, and then he said he himself was, um, he didn't have any, any religion, but he, there's one thing that he cannot um, accept with Europe, it is uh, this uh, permissivity, that uh, liberty to uh, uh, attack other identities and religions. Uh, and he quoted, uh, uh, I think, a British movie that made fun of, of Christ. On, on the, on the thing. He said, these kind of things will never be allowed in Singapore because we believe that the world is too, um, too small now and is too intertwined to permit ourselves this type of, um, of liberty, of freedom. He said, there must be limits, and we have established, he said, in Singapore, a system whereby, we, we, not that we send him to, to prison right away, the, the person who, who shows such a movie or who on the radio broadcasts insults Islam or whoever, it goes all directions. But we, we tell them, no, you have a chance, you repent and revoke what you did. If you don't, you get fined. If you do it again, you get fined terribly and your station is, will be closed. Now, this is not liberal uh, democracy, it's not. But it is a question that I put on the table of how we go about. And we have, uh, we think, we have France in, in, in front of us, Charlie Hebdo, which makes it a, a hobby or it's a, a line of, 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 uh, <laughs> of the uh, newspaper to, to be irreverent and to be scathing and insulting. And we've seen the burning of, 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 of uh, the, the provocative burning of, uh, of holy books in, 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 in Denmark somewhere. This wouldn't happen in Singapore, and, and it's also about cultural policy, cultural diplomacy. It raises question, and uh, if you feel to uh, need to talk about it, I think this could be an interesting point of discussion. I leave it at that, and I thank you for the attention.